and you're gonna you might feel a little uncomfortable with tonight's show and, and that's the point of it um you know business is not easy uh, but we're gonna bring in mike here now mike is a husband of 19 years it's his beautiful wife catherine uh, a father of four sons he's a contractor an entrepreneur an author there i got the book right there an artist and a motivated motivator so you know we got, we got a lot of a lot of things that align right there uh, mike and Catherine now started multiple businesses including a kitchen and bathroom remodeling cabinet manufacturing granite slab countertops and are known worldwide for being the largest consumer epoxy company stone coat countertops.com whoa right now mike and Catherine have become world famous like legit world famous on youtube with over 250 million views and 1.14 million subscribers let that sink in right let that sink in and just think about what is going to be coming tonight because hello that did not just happen overnight right uh, they built stone code from their dining table in the living room to generate over a hundred million dollars in revenue from their business ventures now tell me what's stopping you where did you start your business you didn't wake up with that you started just like that there is a reason for this guys there is a reason for this now, Mike cares most about, about his one and two, his wife and kids. And he has dedicated his free time to helping others in mentorship for small businesses and working on stuff that changes the world one person at a time. This is gonna be why he shares his message with us today. I'm getting choked up just thinking about this and I cannot wait. So without further ado, Mike, how are you doing, sir? Good, Todd. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you for uh, the kind words you said in your show last night. I'm excited for this, man. Thank you. So am I. I, I really appreciate to have you on this. You know, uh, I tell people, you don't know if you don't ask, and, and that's all I did was I just threw a comment up there and said, hey, I said that same thing. You don't know if you don't ask, and, and now here we are. So uh, to me, uh, I, th I think it's I think it's amazing, <laughs> you know? Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I'm, and I'm really intrigued by your audience. I'm intrigued by your business model. Uh, what you teach is is so valuable. And and you know, I think these there's a lot of hidden gems in podcasts. And what I love about the internet is a search and a deep dive. If you go, if you go deep and stop on, don't just stop on the first page, but you go deep, you find these 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 gold nugget gold mines of podcast information and tutorials and and you're one of them and i know where you're going and i know you know where you're going so thanks for having me here man man that, that's so awesome here I, I we we tell people that the, the rabbit hole of, of knowledge is crazy you know that, that's why youtube suggests this this and this and you're stuck on it for hours because they <laughs> they know what you want to know and they just keep feeding you and if you're there to, to eat it they're going to continue with it so so mike you know why don't you you tell us a little about yourself and your journey to to get to where we are here today yeah, we talked a little before this started, and one thing that we agreed on is we're going to try to do our best to bring as much value as your, to your audience. And so everything that I say um, will be just that. I, I want people to know that, yes, we did start from our dining table. You know, I, I, a favorite quote of mine from a good friend of mine named Sean Cannell, he says, Over, overnight success takes 10 years in our case it was more than 10 years you know you're you're beating on your craft you're you're working you're learning um instead of you know watching tv or the football game i'm learning i'm studying i'm growing i'm building i'm creating and and those things is what happens behind the scenes just like everybody in your audience right now that's what they're doing and so um we started um you know, in the contracting business. I, I'm a general contractor in California, uh, became a general contractor in Oregon, um, and we we subcontracted for a lot of companies. Um, and then eventually I started doing all of my own work and own jobs as I got better at marketing and finding uh, my own clients and understanding I'd like to control my own destiny instead of what another company is selling. I, I wanna have my own products and services. And so uh, Catherine and I built that um, remodeling business. She sold the jobs, I fulfilled the sales and and um we 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 learned in each and every step i started painting houses and then i got on to doing things uh like cabinetry uh fine woodworking molding flooring um kitchen and bathroom modeling with the showers and and the whole the whole uh i didn't want to sub anything out anymore i learned how to do plumbing i learned how to do electrical drywall um roofing uh windows doors i learned how to do all the trades because my dad taught me the philosophy at a young age uh yes you can do it just go learn how don't don't say no to the job and be honest say yeah i haven't done that before but 
let's give it a go. And, and, and then you get paid training, you get to learn. And so in that struggle, um, Catherine and I, um, um, you know, we were always really frugal with our money, really frugal with what, what we, what we focused on. Um, but we got a little bit ambitious and, uh, right before 2008 and started flipping houses. Uh, we would buy a house, we would get a interest only loan on it. Um, APR where it would adjust if the market changed, but we were flipping houses in a month. So we didn't, didn't mind that it was so risky of a, a loan unbeknownst to us. When my second son was born, um, he had some problems with his lungs uh, and, and some other problems happening where his lung collapsed. We had to uh, go to another hospital a couple hours from our hometown. And uh, 2008 timed exactly with that, where the houses that we were flipping, all of our savings, all of our money, all, everything that we had earned up to that point was in these homes. And uh, the, the, the interest rates all changed. Uh, we had our payments became double. My son was dying in the NICU at the time didn't know if he was going to make it. And, um, we started getting the collectors calling and we started getting all the, uh, all the life changing things that kind of, uh, we had to deal with at that point. And because our, our son was in the position he was, we didn't care about the finances. We, we, we said, let it go. I don't know when I'll be able to pay you. And as, as we went back and tried to sell them for at least break even, or then even taking a loss, the market was just crumbling. And so we ended up um, going from a great credit score, great, you know, nice home, nice cars, uh, all financed, over leveraged, and we lost it all. Um, moved in with my parents, helped my parents um, remodel their house so that they could try to sell it before it was too late um, because they were having some, some other, some similar issues. And uh, we moved to Oregon because we, we bought a trailer. Uh, it was, it was about uh, 20 feet long. It was, and, and, and we remodeled that. I got it for $600. I remodeled the whole thing with uh, my wife. We had a uh, couple dogs and, and three kids at the time. And we bought a piece of property uh, and we moved on that property, which uh, didn't have any electricity at the time, didn't have running water at the time. Um, and we, I, I'd go back to California and still do remodel work because there was still remodel work. But I, I, uh, I would save the money, come back to Oregon and, and build our house uh, out of our pocket because we couldn't get a loan. We got a interest or we got a uh, owner carry to, to take on the Oregon property. So it was very high interest. We, you know, most people don't last through an owner carry. They end up foreclosing on it. We, we built our home there, a thousand square feet, two bedrooms, one bath. Um, we didn't have running water um, for three years. We used a bucket for our bathroom. We used a creek as our shower. In the winter, we went to the preschool. Um, you know, a lot of famous people out there say I started with seven bucks in my pocket, or you know, I I, I had adversity. And there, there's there's very few success stories that you'll ever hear that didn't go through massive adversity, and that was adversity. But we also enjoyed the ride. We weren't feeling poor or broke during that time we were living in a beautiful spot of Oregon and it was just like camping for us and in about three years it, it gets old but we were camping and uh we, we 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 started our remodel business in Oregon um we moved from California because California where we were my son went to a soccer game watching my nephew while my other son was in the hospital which my other son's fine he he pulled through he's an amazing kid very healthy but during this time my son was at the soccer game and uh, a gangster pulled out a gun and shot another man eight times. My kid was within feet, within 10 feet of this guy. And so we, we decided we're not living in this town in California anymore. Where are we going to move? And um, we moved to Oregon and we, we, we lived there for a number of years building our business. We, we, after all of our expenses, we brought in, uh, lived on about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. No problem. Our bills were really low, but uh, during um, this time, I was installing granite for Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, Sears, Direct Buy, a bit, bunch of big boxes, and I saw what they charged people, and that was a lot of money. Um, um, I knew I couldn't afford it if I went into Home Depot to get granite, so I, I wanted to create um, a system for people. To, to buy a less expensive product that still looked like natural stone, didn't need to be as, as nice as granite, but it needed to emulate it because laminate didn't cut the mustard and, and solid surface was kind of going out of style. And I knew there was a market for um, a product that uh, mainly could go over existing counters. And I got into doing concrete counters that weren't the answer because they broke or they were expensive to manufacture still. And so I discovered epoxy through trying to find top coats for granite at the time and or for 
for um, for concrete, and I discovered the epoxy. Um, and what we would we we called every manufacturer we could find. I tested every consumer product on the market uh, with any money we generated. We we would just try these products. And I was wasn't trying this business to sell the product. I was just trying to offer it locally um, as a contractor to my clients. And I quickly realized. Um, the product wasn't in existence that I was looking for. It left hot cups, left rings. It yellowed very, very fast. It got brittle. It fractured. Um, it, it, the epoxy technology wasn't where I wanted it. And I got a hold of a, a, a company in that search for manufacturers. And this this uh, older gentleman gave me the time of day. Finally, uh, after getting told no countless, countless, countless times over years of of trying. I mean, you're literally researching Dupont and going down that rabbit hole. And what happened was. This guy gave me a lot of help. He gave me a chemist, but I had to buy a lot of product to test. And we had to sell a car on Craigslist just to afford more product. And um, I gave up a number of times and we actually took all of our samples, put them in a bonfire and burned them. I mean, gave up. And then my wife encouraged me, honey, it's you felt inspired. Keep going. Don't give up on that. Let's, you know, take a break. Keep going. And so over the years, we kept going and uh, finally found the product that was right through working with this chemist and working with the technology and and i started with one skew one product and we started off our dining room table uh my wife was the one who um, fulfilled the orders because i was still building cabinets to support us my kids became our shipping department um and my dad was our first employee so that's the that's the cliff notes of the story but ultimately it's uh adversity like like you wouldn't believe um, and not sleeping for a lot, a lot of years. I, and I think that speaks to a lot of how small businesses are. You know, we talked beforehand and my wife's over here packaging orders as we speak going through that. You know, that's, that's where a lot of us are. You, you start with what you have and you grow from there. And the biggest thing is, you know, you didn't stop when somebody said no. You know, you knew what you wanted and you continued after it. And I think so many people, you know, stop after that no. Eh, you know, yeah. that's it. You know, and, and they, they stop. I mean, you know, as we also talked, if I would have stopped, I, I wouldn't have had my wife. You know, we, we dated in high school and then, you know, 20 years later, we're married. You know, she I, I kept on that one. So you have to you have to keep chasing that. Yes. And, yeah, uh, you know, that that's so hard to do because it can be so defeating. But I, but I promise people, you know, that as long as you keep at it, good things will happen. And, and I, I know it's tough and, and I know people they I think today's society, we want to have something so quick. Amazon changed the way we did stuff and everybody expects two day answers. And. There's a lot of not two day answers out there, you know, that it's just not the way it is. And, and you have to take a, you have to take action. You have to take massive action if you want things to happen. If you want big results, you have to take those big risks and, and, and they're scary. You know, yes. anything, if it doesn't scare you, I don't think you're kind of pushing hard enough for it. You know, yeah, it, it's got to scare you a little like, cause even this, I've been doing this for four years now. And before I do every one of them, I still get a little nervous. What's going to happen? How's it going to go? And and if that feeling ever went away, I think I'd have to stop because I love that that rush of it. Let's see what happens. Let's go from there. And it's just, I wish there was an easy answer for people, but there isn't, you know, they, no. they, and then there, I guess there is work, put in the work, mm -hmm. right? Just you got to put in the work at it. So that's, that's what I like to, to tell people. You, you got to put in that work for it. So, um, so where are you now? Where, where's everything? I mean, we didn't get your weather check. It looks, can can I speak to that real quick? Uh, something you just said was so, you know, putting the work, but also, you know, you could feel like you're accomplishing a lot by being really, really, really busy, but you could be on that treadmill and you're still in the same place. And so work smart too. And, and what's beautiful about this time and this window that we all have right now is all of the answers are out there and it's all actually free. You, you get to learn how to use Canva, like that, that tool that you're about to teach is unbelievable i i use that all the time all the software all the tools it's all available the marketing's available the the algorithms play to creators to people like you and i if we just put in the work to learn how to use it but also prioritize where that time goes don't you, you know do today i just was on a mentor call this morning do today what's gonna move the needle today do that first don't don't go for your long you know what's gonna Pay the bills right now, right today. Do that first, and then don't go take a break. Keep going. So yes, work is always the bridge between you and success. Absolutely. Okay. I'm I'm in I'm in Hawaii, bro. Like uh, we we actually came out here a few year a couple years ago. Three no three years ago now. I did a video with a guy out here. His name was Dr. Bob Martin. He has a um 
is Dr. Bob Martin. He has a uh, syndicated radio show, national radio show about, um, you know, health and, and being a doctor and kind of diagnosing things through his radio show. Really smart individual. And he reached out to me because his house in Hawaii is unbelievable. He, uh, he got a bid on his countertops for 50 grand to redo his counters. And he's like, no way. I mean, he's still a frugal guy. Any business guy, they, they know value. They, they also don't want to be ripped off. And 50 grand was too much for countertops. And so he started the search for what do I do? And he found us and he reached out and he said, look, dude, I'll, I'll fly your team out to Hawaii. I'll put you up in my condo. Um, I'll do it. I'll, I'll talk about you on my radio show. Come do the. And we were we were way too busy. I couldn't actually go to Hawaii. I couldn't do it. And he was so persistent. He didn't stop asking. And my wife's like, Mike, just go take a break. Go out to Hawaii. And when I came out here, I'd been to Oahu. I'd never been to Big Island. And I'm not a city guy. I'm a country guy. I don't like big city. I like visiting. I just wouldn't live there. And out here on the big island, it is, it's, it's like North Shore. It's, it's super country, super open. And I fell in love with this place. I called my wife. I said, you got to get out here. We're, we're buying a house here. And, um, thank, thank the Lord glory to him that we we're here, man. And, uh, raising my four sons here. And this is, this is, uh, unbelievable. Very I've blessed. I've been, been following the journey and it's, it's been amazing. You know, it, it's one of those things where when you look at where you came from to where you're at, it, anything is possible. And, and so many people, you know, don't want to don't want to believe that. And, and it is, you know, anything is possible with it. And they like said, you know, you have uh, what, what now one point one four million subscribers over on the Stone Coat channel. And yes, sir. now you just started up the new channel. So, yes. you know, maybe tell us some about, you know, the Stone Coat channel and where that is, how it got to where it is. And, and now why you started the new channel, and what you plan on doing with that. Stone Coat Channel honestly started because I was just like you. I went to trade shows. I went to home shows. I went to, I actually had most of my success was at like uh, craft, not craft fairs, but like festivals. They would do like a Western festival in my town and we'd go to a Western festival or go to the Halloween, you know, festival and, and they allowed vendors. But anywhere there was people that had homes that owned countertops or kitchens, I had success. And so I learned going to festivals that weren't necessarily geared towards home remodeling. I was like one of the only people there in my niche. And so there was no competition. You're just, it's a numbers game. And then it's how well are you with people? And then it's what's your message and what's your hook? What's your thumbnail in that, in that home show? So how's your booth look, you know? And then how do you approach people? And so I learned early on that that if I just got in front of people, that if I could show them before and afters, if I could show the story of what I could do for their kitchen or bath or, or the project I was trying to earn, that uh, a picture was worth a thousand words, but a video is worth a million. So if I could show the process in which I'm gonna come in your home and turn your counters from this to this, I would, I would always close the deal. And so I learned um, I would bring that DVD to any uh, bid that I got. So I'd stop them at the home show, I'd get their information, I'd set up a bid, I would go to the house, I would give them the DVD, I'd play it in their computer while I measured their kitchen and I would sell every single job and my prices would go up because of demand. But I learned that that video is what sold my work. But then I, I, I was burning these DVDs by the hundreds. The problem is that it, it was burning my computers up. Like it could only write so many DVDs at the time. And I found out about YouTube. I actually found out about YouTube when, when I had hair before I was bald, I was getting my hair cut and there was a mag there was a magazine and it talked about YouTube selling to Google and, and what it was. And I'd never heard of it before. And I was like, oh, I could upload and send that link to my client before I show up and see if they're still interested, which I know they will. But, but now it's it's I don't even have to measure unless they've agreed to the job at this point. So I just started YouTube because of that DVD pain of burning them. I got the free link. And then I realized I was getting these questions from Wisconsin, from, from all over the country, if I could come do their project. And I'm in, you know, at that time I was in California and I'm going, no, <laughs> I can't go to Wisconsin. And, and I go, well, wait a second, how can I? And then every home show I went to, my booth would be packed. And every contractor in the local area would would be kind of pissed because I'm taking the the attention. I learned how I learned I was a practitioner of study and attention. What makes them stop? My dad, he he helped me. Everybody thought it was granite. They thought my product was granite because at home shows, people know if they make eye contact with you, you're gonna like sell them. You're gonna you're gonna grab them. And so like unless they're really interested, they're not even looking. But I made a sign that said this is not granite. 
because my dad told me to. He goes, make a sign that says this. I go, dad, that's not going to work. I made the sign. We put it up in front of our booth. And that was my, that was my rapport builder. I said, Hey, did you know this is not granite? And I point at the sign because if it's on a sign, it's true. So they right. look and they go, Whoa, it's, it's not. And then immediately they touch it. They feel it because everybody sees with their hands. They touch it. They feel it. They go, Whoa, what is it? That's all I needed. What is it? Well, it can go over your old existing countertops. Really it means you could save money. You can go in fast. You don't have this giant demo. And here's the price. It's the same as laminate. Sold. Done. Like now, now watch this. And by that time, I'm I'm putting videos up on my TV at the home shows. They're closed. Now I got every contractor coming to the booth. Dude, how do you do this? And I won't tell them. I'm hiding it. I'm I got it. I'm I'm, I'm doing all the jobs I could ever imagine. And I I talked to Catherine. I'm like, why are we hiding this? Why don't we talk to our manufacturer, figure out what they could scale? Can they can they sell more product? If like, how hard is this? Because I, I didn't know if they could fulfill it. And we we went ahead and and made DVDs, a back to DVDs. I wanted to make training for contractors that asked that question because they were intrigued. I felt like the 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 need was there. So I made all these DVDs. I made them into a package, and it was two thousand dollars for these DVDs. And all the home shows I went to over a two year period, I sold one set and that guy bought one, two gallon kit from me. And I got so frustrated and so pissed off. I took all of my um, samples, all my stone coat samples, cause I was done with it. And I put it in a bonfire and lit it on fire and gave up. And that's when Catherine was like, don't give up. My dad was like, don't give up. And I'm not one who um, chases a loser. I'm gonna, I course correct really, really fast. So, so everything in me was telling me to course correct, but to be honest with you, I'm also a very God fearing man. And I felt like this was one time in my life that I was inspired to keep going. I felt like it was inspiration, but I was losing that, that confidence in those feelings. I thought, no, nah, this is just my head telling me, but we didn't give up. So that's why we did that channel. That's why we grew that channel. And I quickly realized that if I got a better mic, if I made better content that was more palatable, it wasn't so boring. If I didn't say the same adjective over and over, if I got better at editing myself where they were shorter, easier to watch, if I got better at tutorials, if I gave the information away for free and quit trying to sell it, but I gave it away that you have to give to get number one in, in business. Number one, you have to give to get, if you guys gave a free t-shirt, sent that free t-shirt, which I'm sure you teach, I'm sure your, your audience does, but if you sent that, whatever the company, Hey, you know what? If you contacted companies and just sent them cold call, sent me, if somebody sent me a stone coat shirt and said, Hey, I make shirts and here it is, I'd quit buying them from custom Inc. And I'd support the little guy just cause he he's ambitious for the business, you know, things like that. If, if, if you give to get, oh my gosh, that's what we learned. And so we gave it all away. And at the time, um, I had actually reached out to a company and I won't use their name, but I reached out to the company I wanted to buy product from them. And they wouldn't even sell me product because I had to come live and take the training. I never, I couldn't afford epoxy training. I couldn't afford any training. And they were going over, they were going over concrete with the epoxy anyways, old school. I knew better, but, but they wouldn't even sell me product. I'm going, why am I doing that? And there's a lot more to that story. But the, the, the whole point is, is we, once we, once we gave it all away for free and the better the tutorials, the better our videos. And, and, and then what we did is I deemed us, where were we viral? If we were, if, if our average video views was a hundred per video and I got a thousand on the video, I knew that was my virality. It was 10 times my normal. If I had a, a video go organically good. And here's a huge pro tip. I would take money, 20% of our revenue. I would start putting it on those videos, the ones that automatically appease the algorithm and by feeding the whole algorithm exists to sell ads. So if you, if you go with that desire that Google has is to get your money to sell, sell more ads, they want to do a really good job targeting the audience in which is going to buy your product. So if you, if you have a good goal, if you have good content that goes well organically, that's the principle that I came that that's behind you in that book. I talk about that and that's what grew us so fast. Yes, sir. We outgrew companies that were in the business for 25 years in one year by that principle. We outgrew them because we, we, we appease the algorithm and I didn't try to sell. I simply gave away the information when it went viral. I put money to get more eyeballs and more attention on that. And then the new channel, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm in a new season of my life, man. Like, uh, I told my wife, 
when we were building our business, I said, honey, um, what would you sell our business for? She goes, no way would I ever sell our business. I go, I understand that. I go, but everything's for sale and God didn't put us on this earth simply for stone coat countertops. Now, unbeknownst to us, the amount of lives, the amount of um, emails, the amount of um, private messages that we get where actually Stone Coat did change people's lives. It did help them in all aspects of life that I, I don't want to put more weight into, but the weight is heavy. It's huge. It's it's meaningful. And that's why I started that new channel is, is because I wanted to create content uh, that wasn't about just epoxy. And it's not about epoxy. It's about um, it's about the struggle, man. It's about the work. It's about what what I did because I I don't I would not have believed my story had I not lived it. But bec I was a contractor who didn't know how to use a computer. I didn't know how to. I, I would film my stuff on a flip share. I don't know if you guys remember those, but it was this little stupid camera because it had software that helped you edit. Like I didn't know how to use anything, but what I was good at was learning i wouldn't stop learning and and i i was really i struggled in school I, I was in special ed i didn't know how to read until eighth grade because one of my teachers who i went to church with she pulled me aside and said you need to come to my house every day and i'm gonna teach you how to read she taught us how to read i wasn't stupid i just didn't i didn't learn to read therefore i couldn't learn math i couldn't learn how to learn she taught me how to read um when i went into high school they still wanted me in special ed because of my past and i wanted a full ride football scholarship and i told i told my mom i said i can't get a full ride unless i take college prep classes i need i need to be into the regular classes and 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 so um it wasn't happening and i said i'm never going back to school again unless unless you help me get in those classes and she took me in the counselor's office and that counselor looked at my mom and she's like i could see i wasn't stupid i could see in her eyes all right well we're gonna let him and she knew I'd fail. And that's all I needed. Like, tell me I'm going to fail, lady. I'm, I'm not going to fail. I'll work too hard. And I got a 4.0 my freshman year. I never got a, I never got a C in high school. It was all A's and B's. I got a full ride football scholarship, half academic scholarship because of that. But it, you, you have to be relentless in, in, in your own goals. You can't listen to the noise. You can't listen to other people. You can't be told. I can't like, don't you're, you're, your desire has to be bigger than the opposition. The opposition wakes up every single morning. He's the best salesman to tell you, you suck. You're no good. It's not going to work. You're going to light it all on fire. You're going to give up a thousand times. But if, if you can just be stronger than him, just, just a little bit, you'll, you will win. It's, it's, it's a matter of time. I would have never learned where we would get if I quit. Yeah, that that's, that right there if you quit you, you can't you know that's i know uh, on my side where where i look at things uh i would rather fail than wonder what if you know I, mm -hmm. i'd rather fail trying yeah whatever I, at least i tried but i don't want to look back and be like you know what if i would have did that you know what if and that's just i know it's scary and i i think that's the biggest thing that people need to, to get out of is out of their head you know get out get out of your own way you know we, we are our biggest things when when I look at my kids, you know, and I've been trying to get better at it, but you know, we've got eight. So by the, by the this last one, I, I might have it, but you know, there's so many times I said no. And, and should I really be saying no, you know, you know, don't do that. No, don't do that. And am I instilling them that they can't do something? And because I remember when I was a kid, there, there wasn't anything I couldn't do. There wasn't anything I wouldn't try. I was just going, you know, all the way I played, you know, 110% Did I stumble because somebody told me no. And, and so Yes, I know there's boundaries I have to set with my kids. Hey, you know, don't eat the dog crap, you know, like don't <laughs> do that. But there's some learning experiences. I have to let them get out there and do it. And and hopefully, you know, they can be 10 times more than I am. That, that's that's all I can hope for. And when we're, we're giving our legacy to, away is here, be better than me. You know, I, you know we, we, bought our, our, we have one son, you know, who's 23 and, and bought his house. You know, those weren't things when nice. I was that age thinking about, you know. I was too worried about the, the partying and having a ball. I wasn't thinking I need to have a career and I need to get a house and I need to do all this and set myself up for future success. No, I'm like, where's the next bar? Let's go. You know, mm -hmm. I, gotta, I don't have to be to work for four hours. You know what we can do on that? You know, and, and so <laughs> you know, putting these values in front of them, like, you know, do yourself, do what's best for you. Uh, you know, and, and I can't tell people that I can't say, you know, Mike, I think this is what you should do. I don't know what you should do. What do you think you should do? Okay, this is what you should do. Now, now let's see what we can do to help you get there. And 
I think that's where a lot of people do just fall into that of not knowing and not wanting to, to take that action. So we got to do our best to, to get people to know what they want and then to take that action for it. So, you know, for me, you know, like my morning routine, I, I get into the office and I write out my five things of what I need to have done for the day. I split it out. I plan it there. I'm a big planner. I got to write stuff down so I can check it off because yeah, there's all these apps and I can move stuff and click that, but it just doesn't feel as accomplished as grabbing the pin and just crossing that thing off the list. I, I need that physical thing. So, you know, what is, what does your morning routine look like? Well, what you just said, man, that the weight and what you just said is huge. I, I follow that same principle. I, I learned that principle of write five things down and you start with number one. What, what is, and it, it, as being a dad and a husband, my priorities for those five things are different than my five business things. And so I, I, I actually break my day up into three days and that is um, three six hour days. I learned this from Ed Milet. Ed Milet said three six hour days. He gets done more in six hours than most people get done in a whole day, but then he does it two more times. So anybody in his competition is automatically 2.2 or three times behind him day after day after day he he can accomplish so much because every minute of planning you get your biggest return on investment one minute of planning can save you an hour a waste of time so if it if it's if it's 60 to 1 roi what it, what it, i mean just just that five those five items is that i mean what does that take one two three four minutes and when you do it day after day you start doing it automatically so you know what's my mor morning routine i already visualized what is it that i want to get done that day and i put a time clock in my head i actually part of my weakness is anxiety i'll get anxiety when i'm not performing when i'm not where i wanted to be that day and it is so much so that doctors would say oh you need you need some medication but in reality it's the same thing that drives me to not go to bed before i accomplish it that if if i want to get fit and i didn't go work out and I am just dog tired. I got to go work out. I'm not going to bed until I work out. So I learned very quickly to cope with. I know I'm crazy. I know I'm anxious. I know I can't stand it if I didn't get done what I needed to. So let's get better at getting done what I need to. And then also learning to pivot just as fast. I learned uh, to put income producing activities first. If you're going to be in business and you don't do, you kind of, I call it's like going fishing. You got so much to do before you go fish. You you got to go gas up the boat. You got to get your reel re relined. You got to get all your lures ready. You got to attack got all these things you got to do, but you're only going to catch a fish when you're on the lake with your line in the water with the right bait on. So if, if you don't do all that the night before, you're going to waste half the day. So, so how do you get to your IPA, your income producing activity first? Same thing with my family. When I'm with my five-year-old, I know that he wants to go swimming. We're gonna have, we're gonna have Zachy daddy swim night every single night. And I'm gonna talk to him about his goals and we're gonna play and we're gonna throw the thing in the pool and we're gonna, we're gonna play tag and, and I'm gonna help him flip, but that's his IPA. What's my IPA with all of my kids? I know exactly, you know, my, my, my boy loves skateboarding. He wanted a, a skate ramp. I go, all right, do your research. Teach me how to build a ramp. We'll build it together. Like, what's the IPA in your family? What's the IPA in your business? So just like you, I write those down. Um, and and I believe pen to paper is good, but I, I suck at losing paper. And so I just use this thing called keep notes. But key to that is a checkbox. It has a checkbox. I'm going to check it off. That's that dopamine rush of when I check it off, I got it done. Next, what's next? And, you know, I've, I've gotten away from a lot of things that built success in my opinion to me and that was getting up before everybody um i'm now back getting up before the sun i'm now back in the gym i'm now listening to the personal development that kind of got cheesy after four or five years of listening to the same thing it's not cheesy you dwell in what you dwell on if you plug it in your brain it comes out it comes out right now and so i've put that back into a part of my life losing my father 15 months ago i went to a very dark place that i have had to learn to get back into those daily habits of you got to go to the gym you got to work out you got to plug in that personal development and i actually just listened to this guy his name's jocko and jocko talked about death of a soldier and death of his friends and all these funerals he went to because he's he's a special ops guy in the military and he was a navy seal and he said our society has not done well at creating a habit and ritual that's accepted by us as a society. And he goes, as a, as a Navy SEAL, when you go to your buddy's funeral, 
the most valuable possession you own is your trident and you go to their casket and you plunge that trident in the casket and it gets buried with your buddy and that's where it stops you move on your buddy's gone it's time to move on and my dad is gone i'm not moving on but i need to learn to still be a warrior i still have four boys i still have a wife i still have businesses i still have obligations i i got 40 people that counted on me at stone coat i got people that count on me for mentorship if i'm a mess and a wreck because i didn't plan my day i'm useless and so i would say my morning routine is heavily planned first and i don't plan like it's not paralysis by analysis it's it's what do i got to do here's what i want to do and then course correct the entire day to land on the moon because you're only on track to the moon three percent of the time so do all your course corrections adjust pivot and and just be a high executor of those three six hour days and 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 then define what it is you're working on i don't answer my phone i don't look at my phone i don't i don't as e emails are just a place for other people to get in line for the things they want you to do for them and that's okay there's a time in the day for that but don't put it first don't put looking at your stupid phone first most people would make a lot more money if they never had a phone you know if they just used it for for the the marketing tools but man just a waste of the phone is insane and and you know i had a mentor say if you throw away your phone you'll you'll if i told you you throw away your phone you'd be a millionaire would you do it everybody says i want to be a beast like the guy says i want if everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do and so that's the kind of stuff i consume that's what starts my day and that's what carries me on through the whole day Man, that, that, is, that is some great information there. We're, we're going to check in with some people here. Because I was so just enthralled with this. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, we've got other people here that are that are asking stuff over here. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Rastus, you know, let us know. Hey, praise God that your kid was saved. Now, we can't, we didn't have a similar situation, but uh, our son, we had to have, at a, our last one at a hospital, five or three hours away. He had kidney issues. And so we battled with that for like the first six months of not being around the rest of the family and that was about the time where it's like here this is we're doing this as a business i need to i need to be the leader and be able to master our own thing so it totally spoke to me when, it, when you did that right there um Aaron's checking in and he says having that opening question is so valuable you know just asking people how they're doing doesn't work at a trade show anymore and that's right you know just just asking them how they're doing it, it doesn't work you've got to be out there to get it uh and when we we're talking about shirts polar said yeah and now you're gonna get 24 new stone coat shirts from everyone don't here. do it man i got other i got other shirts i want don't do stone coat shirts uh, i because i told you that don't do it you'll you'll yeah i got stuff for you yeah because <laughs> pm see, me they're, they're all thinking the same thing uh of course tell us that you're uh you're such an amazing inspirational story so great there uh, and Thank then Aaron you. came in with, uh, I love all this, especially the part about how hard you work to get better each time. Uh, you know, you can't do the minimum. You have to go above and beyond. And that is so true. You, you have to do that. And get praise. Now, Aaron's my partner in this. And yeah, there's five things. I don't let him know everything I'm doing because, you know, some of the stuff wears off on me. And I, I kind of keep it close to the chest because I'm like, I want to make sure everything works right. And so, yes, uh, he's a success tr principal trainer with Jack Canfield. So it, it's really helped me and part of my journey of things. So, yes, Aaron, I. I am doing that. And then he follows up with a question. So it's so great. So how do you reconcile the part about giving things away for free and then first introducing focus, then first focusing on those in produ income producing activities? Good question. You know that you're, you're exactly right in that, but you, I know that if I give away information, anybody who says they want to start a youtube channel i said i don't know how to start a youtube channel unless it's product based that's all i know i don't know about how these guys do um you know the video game channels or the you know teeny bopper i don't know about any of that but if you have a product that's where it's applicable here's here's why if you give first if you give 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 and then ask expecting nothing in return but just ask hey here's how you do this recipe here's how you save and i know here's it's 10x if i save somebody 10 times their time 10 times their money or 10 times if i help them make 10 times their money off what they invested to buy the epoxy any of those three things it has to be 10x just like the viral video it's got to be 10x if it hits that criteria i've just given away enough information so much that i'm saving you one of those three tens you're probably gonna buy my product or you're gonna tell someone about my product you're gonna be so convinced that i gave you so much free stuff 
that you might want to try it. And most of the time, you're going to try it with the minimum order. You're going to buy my smallest kit. You're going to try it on your vanity and you're going to test my words. If I told you something that was true, now you're going to do your kitchen. You're going to tell your friends about me. You're going to tell all of Facebook, look what I made. You're going to advertise for me. This is income producing activity. If I made a better video that helps you more, you're helping me get where I want to be. Um, it wasn't out of me being just the greatest, nicest guy in the world. It's because it actually worked. If I tried to make you pay me two grand because the materials that I were sell was selling was worth far more than two grand. Todd, if you're going to teach somebody a, 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 an apparel business or a clothing business, the, the information is, is, is extremely valuable. But if you try to sell it for what it's worth, it's hard. To, like you talked about before, if, if, if a lot of things are discounted be, of being valuable pieces of information because we give it away, but people don't realize that everything's free. There's people giving podcasts, there's people giving trainings that somebody's, the internet wants the information to be free. So the guy who asked the question, well, what is the IPA? It's, it's exactly that. It's helping other people that are like serve your customer. That's income producing. Serve them better than anybody. Start in your local community. Serve them better and then go regionally, then go statewide, then go nationally, then go worldwide. And then if you want, go intergalactic. But but be the best at what in, in your space at serving your customer. That's why, you know, we were the only epoxy company that posted their phone number everywhere. I had to hire countless people to answer the phones i had to train them epoxy is not an easy thing to learn i wrote down all the canned responses of the typical questions with videos that go with it like we created a customer service team i didn't adopt another system we did it blue collar contractor style because that's how we knew how to do it we use google docs and and searchable i mean it, we we did it all just by common sense and that's another thing is common sense isn't really common so if you use it and stop overcomplicating things. Stop thinking that the software is going to solve your problem, but man, just write it down, right? Just put that pen to paper. I hope that answered yeah. his question. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Darren says that, uh, Mike, you've been an inspiration to me. Uh, my first big thing I did with Stone Coat was my huge island and countertop. Four gallons were scary. And Darren, when we were talking about this, he posted in our group and I'm like, see, I, I've been on that. Do I do this or not do it? I, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. And then I see Darren does and I'm like, why the hell am I waiting on this? Come on, I need to do it. <laughs> nice good job darren thanks for sharing that and thanks for thanks for your support and uh it isn't it isn't hard but again before you pour four gallons pour something small you know get that recipe down make sure the last thing i want is somebody to waste money uh and and, and also when people did waste money when they had this big mistake our, our our you know and and people will take advantage but that's okay we would always help them you know, I'll, I'll send you four more. You, you you did the wrong thing. You didn't listen to my video and make a sample first. I would send them four gallons if you messed it up. Like you got to help people to that degree, not thinking about your pocketbook or the bottom line. I know it, I said IPA, but it's got to be back here and not the forefront. If I help you first, you're going to help me. You're, so Darren, that, that he had a good experience, he'll probably do another one. He'll probably, he'll pro and, and he's going to tell the world about Stone Coat. Yeah, in fact, if I remember correctly, he's bid two jobs that he's doing, and it's not you know it, it was it went from there. I don't think he set out to do it, but if I remember right, he's bidding two jobs when we talked about it. Uh, and then Aaron did say, uh, "Thanks for answering that, Mike. It was a great answer. Thanks, he loves it." Right, nice. So, um, you know, Mike, what now since since starting this new thing, what makes you feel inspired? What what inspires you? Man, um, a lot. A lot inspires me. Uh, my six-year-old inspires me. Um, my kids. My I have a, a, a boy who's about to turn 18. Looking at him, uh, be self-disciplined and get up in the morning without ever being told go go work out and help his brothers. The the kindness and the generosity that he has it makes me so proud to be his father. Where I don't deserve such uh, amazing attributes from a child, but here he is. My my kids inspire me, and our community inspires me. The people that. Um, have have served our country and have PTSD that learn a hobby and and they take it and they you know the guys who are suicidal that now love their life the 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 stories that I get to hear about the guy who was driving a truck his entire life it was a good career but he missed he's missing his family and his kids and 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 and, and now he's going to start his own business that inspires me uh, the motivational content that I hear from my mentors inspires me the the stories of somebody. Um, getting rid of the safety and security of the nine to five 
I understand the safety and security. I understand the obligation to feed your family. So important. But somebody who works after that nine to five to build their side hustle, to grow it into something that now is out doing their nine to five, that takes that leap, that goes after it, that doesn't just sit and go study, but they take action. They work when, with those stories for me. When you, I've been poor and I've been rich and you can do a lot more good if you choose when you're rich. And so I would say any company that you're working for nine to five is going to pay you exactly what they need to for you to stay there. And that's it. If you want to do massive good, unfortunately, the scoreboard we use as a society is money. And if you want to do good, it makes it a lot easier if you do it and you have you have more to give. And so I would say the stories of people that that figure it out. Denzel Washington, he says, each one, teach one. When you reach back and help the people that are trying, that, you know, if, if I would have had a mentor, I was stupid. I didn't understand the value of reaching out to the person who I wanted to be like and saying, how did you do this? What, sh what would you recommend I do now? If they charge you for that, sometimes it's good. The best mentor is the one who literally just cares about you, who's made it so far that they will do it for free for you. When you do that, and that's what I'm doing with my new channel, is I just want to help people that have questions and help them avoid some pitfalls that are financially sometimes devastating. Like, don't put a bunch of money on an ad unless you know it's already going viral. And, and if you if you don't have a video that's that's not income producing, if it doesn't generate sales, there's no point in putting money behind it. Um, say just just these little like I can see clearly when somebody has a vision of a business, I know. If it's product based, I know how to make it work. 100%. I know how to make it work. I know how to use Facebook. I know how to use YouTube. I know how to use email lists. I know how to use text. I know how to I know how to connect. I know how to do short form, long form and everything in between. I know how to do lives, but all that was such a mystery. Mm -hmm. But now it's clear. So once you've done it, you I mean, you could put me on a desert island right now at least with some people there who have a home that care about their home, I could I could make a living. But 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 it's it was so unclear in the beginning. So that's what inspires me, man. Is just seeing people willing to get out of their comfort zone. Todd, you got you got out of your comfort zone, and and you're exactly right. What's what's the downside to it, man? I mean, all of us want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Ultimately, we could die doing something. But where we go is still a good number two right we're not in earth but we're in heaven man maybe that is number one so right? i don't know yeah. sorry to go yeah. that route man the journey is the journey is the fun right you know, yes like, it is if we're, if we're looking forward to, to something you know and worried about something hey i don't know you know i can't change the past and i cannot predict the future i can only live for today and uh, do can, my best can i say day. something on what you just said todd yeah. uh the journey is the fun the journey is the real inspiration every every step of stone coat i would so i built a little house for my mom and dad right next to our house i built them a little house because they were going through some hard times with their health and my dad and mom lived next to us uh for about four years and while i was building stone coat and while i was failing at stone coat every day i'd go over and i talked to my dad my dad was was my 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 best friend he was my mentor he was my spiritual leader he 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 helped me so much but this guy this time with my father during that journey this time with my wife this this time with my kids that struggle i look back and that that is the value in in what we did that that time of working together in this goal this common goal Man, I wouldn't trade that time for anything. It was, it was, a, it was the most fun I ever had. Just talking about it was like Babe Ruth. We're we're pointing in a direction, and we hit the ball there, you know. And we hit it because we talked every night about it. We 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 made small goals and big goals. And my dad was just, my dad didn't want anything for it. He was just happy. He was happy to see it, man. So yeah, that journey is, it's truly where it's fun. It's one of those things where you know there's a time to make money and it's not when you should be making memories you know you, you can't you can't get those back i can't buy those memories i can't buy that time back i, I can always get more money but i, yeah. I can't 
I can't attend that, that sixth grade graduation again. But once it's done, it's done and over with. And, and I came from that w with my dad, and I was really resentful of that. You know, I, I don't know if I've, if I've ever even told this story, but you've kind of brought it up. I mean, my, my dad, uh, we didn't have the best relationship. So when I see others have that, I, I just... I, I just had that real struggle with it. I was like, what was my problem? I was like, wasn't I not good enough? Did I did I not make him happy? And I realized it was my dad's struggle with addiction. You know, with, with drugs and alcohol, he had a really bad addiction with it. And it came to a point in my life where I had to, I had to stop. I, I just said, you know, I, I'm done and over with this. Uh, I'm tired of putting in the effort. I shouldn't have to do that. And so we didn't talk for five, six years. Uh, and, uh, and then he got sick uh, and, and he got cancer. Uh, and from the time we found out he had cancer, so the time he died was 11 days and he died in my house and um, I brought him in and, and I did that and I had so many questions I wanted answered that I didn't get answered I, and I beat myself up for it where I was like why wasn't it and then I realized it's not me it was him I did everything I could do uh, to be the best person I can and I, I brought him back into my home you know I said you this is I want to spend the, those time with you so Having that, uh, you know, I, I strove, you know, I'd say, to, even though I, you know, I say he wasn't the, the greatest, he gave me some of my, my best lesson in life. I did not want to be him. I wanted to be the father to my kids that I didn't have. So I, I took that and I took that negative and I turned it into a positive. And, and so I think that that goes with a lot of things where you have to take those negatives and turn it into a positive. And, and you know, it sounds to me like, like your dad was one of the people that influenced you the most in, in your life and your business. Would, would that yes. be right? Yeah. He, he, yeah. he, absolutely. I, I, my dad was always blue collar. I grew up, if you wanted to spend time with my dad, I had five brothers and sisters and my parents took in, um, children in need and they took in uh, during my ages of kindergarten through high school, we had over a hundred, uh, needy children that my parents took care of, uh, throughout that time. Um, and my dad w would go to work all day and then he'd come home and his side hustle uh, he, he, he was in the construction trades, but his side hustle was to make leaded glass and stained glass windows. He, he, he was an artisan. He didn't ever present himself as an artisan, but looking back, the windows that he created, they, they, they belonged in, you know, that he could do. He, everywhere he in, installed these was always in the multi, multi-million dollar homes. And so as a kid, I'm going to these homes under construction when it was time for, to put in windows. And it, and it was, uh, for instance, my dad did uh, Eddie Murphy's house. He did all the windows in Eddie Murphy's house. And in fact, he, uh, he built a window in that same neighborhood and he went over to the house and he installed the window and the homeowner he told me he goes watch i'm going to install this window and they're going to hire me to do every single window in their house just from this one window we did that we installed it five minutes after we were done installing the guy goes can you give me a bid uh my dogs just came up here so hopefully they don't knock over my camera he goes can you give me a bid on the whole thing on the whole house i went well how'd you know he goes he goes because if you do a good job if you make it so much better than everything else it's now it's out of place it looks it, it changed the entire house he did a job for another contractor where he built the whole entry the whole the whole entry he did a, a window above the side lights the doors everything he built the whole thing and he did it out of his shop it and i, I used to bevel glass for him on the beveling i'd, I'd use diamond pads and we bevel this thing and and I remember my dad, he probably had, looking back, I bet he had 30, 40, 50 grand of material into this project. And the guy, the contractor couldn't pay him for these windows because he, he became over leveraged on this project. And my dad said, you know what? Let's put it in. It'll help sell the house. You'll get your money. You could pay me. He put it in. It sold that week. And I'm just like, you got to give to get. He went to Eddie Murphy's house. He did the same thing. He did this amazing entry, he did all the windows, crazy, crazy house. And Eddie Murphy's assistant says, we need a fish tank and it needs to be salt water. And the chillers need to be in the basement because we don't want to hear the pumps. And he starts going on and on. And, my, and he goes, can you do it? Because it was glass and my dad worked with glass. So apparently they put said, okay, he could do it because he, he works with glass. My dad never built a fish tank in his entire life, especially a salt water one. And he goes, yeah, I could do it. We get in the truck and I knew to keep my mouth shut. I, I wasn't going to go, dad, you've never done that in front of the client. I get in the truck and I go, dad, you never done that. How the hell are you going to do it? He goes, somebody knows how to do it. We'll figure it out. 
and he built this ridiculously crazy fish tank and it had a saltwater eel and the damn eel jumped out of the tank and they called my dad he go to go pick eel bit the living crap out of him and he puts it back in the tank like my dad could do anything because he said yes i can do it and then he'd figure it out so i forgot what your question was leading to that story i apologize i i don't know where we're going with that <laughs> just who was a uh, who's it it sounded like your dad was your biggest influencer so you know it was it's that's what we were you know, that's where you and my to. and my mom my mom would um she would go to my i was i was a chubby little nerd kid everybody kind of i was kind of awkward didn't know how to read wasn't like um i wasn't into the party and i wasn't into uh, a lot of things my kid kids my age were um i was i wasn't into like music and stuff i found these tapes that my dad had when he went to a conference from zig ziglar in sacramento and he bought like a a, a bunch of uh, cassette tapes about motivation and i found one of them and i put it in my little walkman and i played it and i went to my dad and i said dad the kids at school are making fun of me because i'm fat and he goes okay okay he goes you can do one of two things but both of them will work and I go, yeah, like I'm all excited. I go, what's the answer? And he said, well, you could go on a diet. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. I, I enjoy eating Cap'n Crunch. I don't want to go on a diet. And he says, or you can laugh with them. And I'm like, dude, both of those suck. I don't want to do either of those, you know. But in listening to those tapes from Zig Ziglar, um, I realized that I could just get tougher. I could actually change my cards by 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 working really hard. I wanted to get good at football so that I could prove to these bullies that I was a, I was tough. And, and so I, I did just that. I worked out twice a day. I listened to these tapes. I thought it was just one tape. My dad heard that I was listening to it. He threw me the second one and I go, oh, there's another one. I listened to that. I memorized these Zig Ziglar tapes at a very young age. And, and uh, it got me very intrigued about motivation. Zig Ziglar, I credit him for uh, the motivation that I had at a young age, but then I realized by taking action on that motivation, it get, got me results. I realized, you know, I made I made deals with my father in heaven. I said, hey, I won't I won't hurt my body. I won't drink. I won't smoke. I won't do drugs. I, if you help me be a good football player, help me from being this fat chubby kid. Help me be a good football player. I'll treat my body right. And and and, and I never broke that. I got a full ride football scholarship. To this day, I haven't had a drink of alcohol because I made that promise. You know, I believe that if you make covenants with your maker, he, he wants you to succeed. I believe if you listen to mentors and inspirational people, they w just want you to succeed, but you gotta, you gotta take the action. I couldn't put the Captain Crunch in my mouth anymore. Yeah, 100%, that, that goes perfectly into, into my next thing. Uh, you know, what are, um, how do I do this? You know, what are two things that you would recommend to our audience uh, that they need to take action on today and why do they need to do it? Um, number one, if you don't have a direction or goals, you're, you're flying blind. You don't know where you're going. So you need to make goals for the day, for the week, for the month, for the year, for five years and for 10 years. You need, you need a very specific plan of not necessarily how you're going to get there, but where you want to be. And then you get to re reverse engineer that plan. Go find people who are there in each of those and say, how do you do it? Give me some advice. And, and Todd, I mean, you reached out to me and, and I want to give us like, I'm very like, you, you care about my opinion. I'll give it to you. No problem. There's anybody who's made it will not anybody there's exceptions but most will give that for free they want to help you so get those people to help you that's the number one is make your make your goals find out who's there and then just copy what they're doing you know if it you know i know this is going spiritual but if if god is real he's going to answer our prayers with kind of the same answers whether it's how do i get along with this person or how do i help my finances or how do i you know help my health the answers are, are mathematical and scientific. There's things to do. So our answers are gonna be the same. So we all plagiarize those answers. They're just given to us in different ways. Or we hear them via a mouthpiece of a guy I listened to on YouTube about motivation. He still got that from somebody who was inspired. There's nothing that's a, you know, the thought leaders are just better at presenting those thoughts, but those thoughts are given by inspiration. And so the answers aren't complicated, it's simple. The, the, the action is complicated, it's hard, 
but the answers are simple and so get your goals find your answers and then second don't make excuses i deal with uh, a lot of different people in business a lot and the ones that are the most successful they blame everything's on themselves first everything's their fault when there's a fire happening it's their fault when customer service is going downhill it's their fault when we can't get anything shipped it's their fault when our product isn't in stock it's their fault everything's their fault and the reason they do that including myself is because i learned if you blame it on yourself first that's the only things you can fix i can't if and the moment that i blame it on supply chain the moment i blame it on COVID, the moment that i blame my problems on you know anything my mind subconsciously stops searching for what i can do to fix it so if you if you stop making excuses and pretend because it's not all your fault but if you pretend it is you'll you'll do all the action have all the answers to do what you can do and that's all you can do so then move on because you can't get the president of the united states or russia and ukraine to get along you can't like if you go and here's number three stop consuming trash if you read the news and watch the news and you and, and like you go to your cell phone and you consume all this crap that's what you're going to spew back out if you if you input beauty beauty comes out if you if you if you stop the drama stop the arguments get thick skin and don't worry about negative comments don't worry like read the negative comments and see what where the truth is where's the underlying truth behind the hurtness and what can you actually do better because because most negative comments have a lot of truth behind them that you can improve on so look at those before you look at the positive ones and then you know build a team man like if you if you went against if i went against one-on-one -on -one, the best student from mit in business he might beat me maybe not anymore now i've got a, good, a better education than he does which you don't always get it you don't get education in in school for what we're talking about here but 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 let's say we're going against somebody who's the best in the world at something if i put together a team i guarantee i win if he's single if he's one person and i put together a team just give me five people against one i guarantee there's nobody in the world that could beat us probably at anything you know, if you put me up against the best fighter in the world and I got five people and I get to choose them, we're not the best, but we're going to win. S same in business, man. So if you put together a team that you can trust, that you can inspire and you can be inspired from, the problem is, is our society, it's becoming an anomaly. It's not becoming very easy to find that team. And so here's what you have to do is you have to tie your success to theirs. If you build a team, based on performance if they perform they get paid more out of your pocket if they perform they get rewarded they get what they want if they help you get what you want instead of this by the hour thing it's paid on performance you're going to have a lot of people that can't live like that because commission-based living like here's your here's your stipend but here's here's where we really want to be but i can't pay you that if i if i don't get it coming in i can't but i'll share it with you if it comes in if you're willing to share like that you're gonna find people that are willing to perform like that because high performers know they can do it. And they're not, and, and they don't look at the clock. If you look at the clock, you have to look at the price tag because you can't afford it. But if you stop looking at the clock and you start performing, that's when everybody starts winning. We made some of those changes in our customer service. We were getting 60% of our calls missed. I tied performance metrics to our team we get 100 percent of our calls answered 100 percent of our emails answered our customer service is amazing because we quit being cheap we started tying performance to it that's how i perform i know that's how you perform mm -hmm. so so there's some advice <laughs> so then you know what's the key of, of building a good team you know i know i know we've had I always like to give everybody a chance and sometimes those chances hasn't played to my favor but you know a, a lot of times I, I believe what somebody's going to say until they can prove me wrong instead of thinking they're wrong and until they can prove me right uh, so what do you think are some of the keys to building a great team um i i'm 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 in danger of being i don't want to appear pompous i don't want to appear mean but i'm going to be real talk here okay. i made a lot of mistakes in building a team um, I had never worked, I've always worked on the construction site and that's a completely different team 
than the team that I currently work with. And so I had to learn from scratch the hard way of how to build a team. I learned that I got, you get red flags about 90 days in, the red flags start if there's gonna be red flags. When you get those red flags, you gotta course correct. You gotta give people a chance to win. You can't look for a reason to get rid of people or else you'll find it. But if you get, if you find a reason to inspire and help and guide and mentor, but you gotta have criteria. If criteria is met on the negative, you gotta part ways as friends. It's so much more important how you part ways than it is how you hire on. So I always took it really seriously. I, I hated letting somebody go, it hurt my heart because we're talking about families and kids and 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 income it hurt i i would always offer when we had to let somebody go listen this isn't working but if you need help in this part of your life you got my number i, I will help you i will help people that want to help themselves but what i learned is what what i'm looking for in a lot of respects you can't know if they're right until you get in the trench with them in the foxhole and once you do that, you find out who somebody is. And it's when times are hard, when the when the when there's deadlines, when there's when there's commitments, when when you've done these things and you're in the foxhole with with and and I kept my personal team, the one that was around me, I took it very seriously on who I had around me because you become a product of the five people you hang out with most. And so I was very nervous about making a wrong decision, but what I learned is Everybody looks good on a resume. Everybody looks good on paper. Anybody who you're going to hire has done really good in their interview. But you got to course correct. A lot of times we would find, okay, maybe this isn't working. Let's try you over here. Try over here. If the three things don't work, it's time to part friends. But, but the ones who you're going to put in your foxhole, it's going to take sometimes one out of 10 people, one out of 20 people who are going to be what I call closers, they're going to be warriors. They're going to be the person who has your six. It's not common. And so you have to find those by putting people at an easier position and evaluating and seeing who you, the best people I ever got on my team were people who knew nothing about what I ended up having them do, but I taught them how to do it because I learned. I taught them and then they grew it to the next level and the next level and the next level. So I built my team by building people. So it wasn't like somebody I found who already had the skills, I built the skills for them and with them. And I sat next to them. We, I guided them in exactly how I did. They got a back row, front row seat, a front row seat at what, how we built Stone Coat. Any one of them that that had experience working next to me could go start a multi-million dollar business today with the knowledge that they have guaranteed if they if they took the action but that's that's the bridge if you're comfortable in your job it's hard to have desire to do that work and i don't blame them i get it but also yeah. if you're number 15 at facebook you're, you're doing pretty damn good i don't think you need to start your own business <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I you know I tell people if they're they're tired of their nine to five, then then you got to work on your five to nine. You know, you get out there and get after it. You know, when you're so after true. hours, you, you have to to do it. You know, you make those sacrifices so you're so you're able to. And, and like I said, some of those people when they get into it, that that's when they realize that hey, this this isn't right for me. Uh, I'm okay, you know, with my job. I may not like it, but I like that comfort of having that you, paycheck. You, you know what I started doing too? I forgot to say this is when when I. When I started to hire people, I would actually, I would actually use them on on like a project. I wouldn't say I'm looking for a full like use them on a project. Say, hey, I got something different. I'm trying. You want to help me? Out? Even if it wasn't different, let's try you out. See how it goes because it's 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 done after I'm done with this particular campaign. We're done, but I just need some help. And then you know, asking, I would actually ask a lot of times. I'd ask my audience. I'd say, hey, who, anybody looking to help me with this? And and I'd go with people that were hungry most of them i wouldn't even tell them it was a paying job i always paid them and i would surprise them at the end with ridiculous pay but i i wanted the person who would do it for free if you'll work with me for free 
it you're you love what you're like you want to do this you're hungry you want to prove yourself you you want to learn how we're doing our youtube channel you want to learn how we're placing that ad how are we making that thumbnail how are we figuring this out how'd you come up with that and i taught them any questions they had here's an open book anybody who doesn't work for me here's an open book i'll tell you everything we're doing because the price of entry is action and that's hard if you do it i'll clap for you man you earned it but i i i, I would try them out and then I try them again, and I hire them, subcontract them. Sometimes I would, it, when I needed somebody that would go like maybe a new person for our shipping department, it got it got to a point where logistics and HR and 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 legalities and contracts, all these things became real that Catherine and I didn't know much about. So I hired a temp agency. I would try people out, call it dating before getting married. I learned that from a, a mentor, and and we would find the best people we could that were hungry and hum humble enough that they had to go to a temp agency and then we would pay them more than they ever dreamed they could make and that's how we that's how we found loyalty and that's how we found somebody who wanted and then i mean we we promoted people from our shipping department into customer service into management into into running the person who runs all of the all of the logistics and all of the site now for stone coat she she started out answering phones and making spreadsheets and now she knows how to run a nine-figure business she didn't know any of that and and that's the building within you know you create that culture of hey we're gonna go to bat for you you know it's not me first i'm me last you know i want everybody else before me you know i i, I don't want to say that the buck stops here because you know hey i i need you you're you're my team i i am nothing without you I, I, as much as you know as Corey is intricate part of this business sometimes she doesn't feel like she is and i have to tell her hey i'm nothing without you you know if i can print stuff and i can do it but if it doesn't ship out <laughs> what are we doing you know it's sitting here i i need you you know you are more to this business than i am you know we i'm just a face i you know i'm not even a pretty face at that i'm just a face and i try and get things done you know it's behind the scenes it's those people behind the scenes that really make the the, the work happen and you know, a lot of times they, they don't get enough credit or, or and to me I think that's where you find some of your best people at you know you bring in that culture you, you find out who who your top people are and, and who really care about you and your business and, and those are the ones that you know you're gonna pull by the hand and say let's do this together you know, uh, you know we're in this together and and building that team uh, the, the team is the team is where it's always at and, and you, you know what we did with the team Todd is uh, I, I, I listened to this video and this guy was in sales. He was actually sold insurance, a life insurance. And so he had this life insurance company and built these agents up and he taught these agents and they were like a, they were like an underdog, no name insurance company. And the metrics were um, public of what their competitors would sell. And so he actually put together a world championship. And he knew and his team knew that they were in a world championship, but they were taking down Goliath in their mind. They were trying to to win the industry, to be the top selling insurance in the entire world by following certain principles. But it was they were in a world championship and they hit the metrics. And so what he did is he went to the same company that made made the Super Bowl rings and he and he had Super Bowl rings made for every one of his employees that that won the world championship. And so I listened to that video. I go, I like that idea. I found the company that he was talking about. And those rings that he bought were not cheap. And I told my, my, and this was right around January, right before January. So I said, we're going to launch this in January. I went to my team and I said, listen, we're in a world championship. Here's the metrics of everybody that I want to compete against. I can see their subscribers, I can see their views, I can see the comments, I could see uh, every channel that they're on, and and we're gonna beat them. We're gonna beat them, we're gonna win. And here's our goals, and we defined them, and we, we paid attention, we put our competitors up on the board, we wrote down what they were doing, wrote down what we were doing, anything that was public knowledge. And you can't find a lot of public knowledge in a lot of respects like you could in insurance, but there was enough to be, to have the, the, game, the game set, the rules set. And we not only beat them, but because we had our eye on those metrics, we we it exploded the industry. We you, we actually got audited by a, a large company that was looking at why the epoxy industry elevated as a market. Because when we started, it it wasn't anywhere near where it is today. 
and and they actually came back because i i'm now uh, i sold my business to polytech and polytech owns probably 30 consumer-based epoxy companies at this point and they came back and they said that the moment that stone coat started putting out videos the market elevated and the more they grew the market followed and i was so proud of that but that's the exact time that we defined our world championship my wife and i bought those rings we made diamond rings with a whole bunch of diamonds in the stone coat logo we hit a hundred thousand subscribers that year we we hit all these metrics that we were trying to hit and i gave those rings away at our at our christmas party because we won the world championship so if you if you rally people and motive like if you're if you're corporate america if you're not afraid to cry with your employees or or scream with them and love on them and cheer them and and lift them and and help like you don't help them grow if you don't have their back when they can't pay their mortgage if their kid gets sick and they need help you don't have their back you ain't gonna win a world championship you gotta you gotta be in the trench yeah that 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 definitely sheds a whole light on, on things you know when, when you think about it that way setting that championship goal you know it, you're creating that team environment you're creating that one common thing to go after and and we can do that ourselves even if you're just a single person business you know you can set, yeah. that, goal. set that ring get what you want you know <laughs> yeah you're there. building Paul you're building policy procedure right now that eventually you're gonna teach that was another thing my wife got so good at learning how to do something already knowing we're gonna have to teach this someday so make it simple make it I heard a quote and it said if you're building a business build it so good that an idiot can run it because someday they will <laughs> I'm like hmm okay I'll do that you know but but uh am I the idiot sometimes I am and so I'm still able to run it you know yes I I, I am that idiot well and, and Chuck <laughs> commented in here that uh so Corey's the one I need to thank for the quick turnaround times I get from fat dad and and yes we, here was the thing is when Corey started taking over the shipping uh you know we put in a, a note with our instructions and you know I always I would include something you know have a great day you're awesome something and i'd sign my name to it well then i caught her signing my name and i'm like no sign your name you're doing this put the information in there i'm like take ownership of that and she kind of looked at me i'm like nobody's gonna believe that's my handwriting anyway it's way too pretty but yes you know get out there and, and do that like take ownership of that because to me in my previous careers of running business and that is the employees that i, I gave the change to screw up and let them own their mistake and let them be a part of the business turned out to be our best employees they didn't call in sick you know they didn't no call no show they put in extra hours because they took ownership of the job and loved it and that's the way we create our business you know we have that opportunity to work as few or as many hours as we want in a day and very rarely we say ah oh, you know i just don't feel like working today no because guess what that job's still there so you set that goal and you get it done because if you don't who else is going to do it and it's very hard, but at the same time, it's so rewarding. So rewarding when you get that up back in. So, you know, Mike, we went into clearly into bonus time today, it's, but it's been such amazing nuggets that you've dropped here with us. But um, we do have a, a controversial question that we have to ask people. And, and this one, you know, it's, it's near and dear to me, but uh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to be good with it. One pizza, yes or no? pineapple on pizza i live in hawaii bro if i said no we'd be in trouble i mean what are they like i grow whole pineapple on the property pineapple goes on everything man no it doesn't it is not it's not a real <laughs> topping like legit you have sausage and pepperoni if you want pineapple on pizza it becomes a fruit pizza so it becomes dessert it is not a topping on pizza i i'm gonna and i knew this when i came into it and i'm looking at questions i'm like yeah, so this is the one I already know the answer to because it's like, oh. I got to argue with you, man. It, if I took you to a restaurant called Humpy's, and they call it Humpy's because it's after humpback whales because they come in Kona, Hawaii. I go to Humpy's, and they have the true Hawaiian pizza. Okay, I think they know more about pizza than you do, Todd. True Hawaiian pizza. You come out, you get barbecue sauce, you get Kahlua pork, you get cheese, and you get pineapple it's the best pizza you'll ever eat in your entire life and if you don't like it i'll pay for your whole trip to hawaii but if you do you you, you got to admit that pineapple belongs on pizza bro See, to me that, that's a flatbread pork sandwich that's what that is that's not a pizza you're pretending to be a pizza you're pretending to be a pizza it's not a pizza it's, it's marketing sauce. it's marketing homie you better get good at it <laughs> that's what it is it's marketing it's the way you do it so, Mike, we've had an amazing conversation here. You know, where can people find out more about you? Where can they find you at? 
You know, I'm, I'm in a new season of my life. They won't see me on Stone Coat very much. Um, my brother, I've turned that entire channel over to him and I've dedicated my next season to um, trying to change the world, Todd. I'm trying to help people in ways that I wished uh, I found when I was starting. And so Mike Quist on YouTube is where I am. MikeQuist.com is, I'm actually doing a um, beta test right now. I'm. I bought every program available known to man on how to sell your art online. Every program that you could spend money on, I did. I've 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 taken all the gold nuggets out of it that I may or may not have known, but I I go, okay, if, if these if this is what this person did to sell, and that's what they did. So I I learned how are artists selling online. I'm gonna I've already proven the concept. I've started testing how to sell art online. I'm gonna start teaching people not only how to sell art. But how to how to turn their craft into cash, how to turn their passion into profit, how to start a business, how to build a business, how to how to stay motivated. I'm just going to share the things that I learned that day while I'm working out. I'm going to I'm going to regurgitate it in my way. That's going to help people in the way that I can, because uh, not everybody's palatable to everybody. But the people who who love me, I'm more than willing to share everything that I've learned. And, and like I told you before, I know it sounds cocky, but there's not a product based business on planet Earth right now that I couldn't um kick butt with and you know the to me i, I think the, the biggest thing that you're going to say with that is they need to take action right and yes that's, that's the biggest thing is so many people don't want to don't want to do it and to me i'm like if if you're not willing to take action you're, you're just not ready for it and and you have to do that and I think I, I speak for everybody here when we thank you so much for coming on to this. Uh, I know there was a ton of knowledge. I know I'm going to go back and, and watch this again because I I've, I just love listening to you. I love everything you've been putting out. And the new channel has been amazing uh, to see what you're doing. And and it, it's different to see, you know, that the whole crafting side of it. Because a lot of us, you know, we do on the epoxy side, we do, cup, you know, she's got cups over here turning that she does epoxy with her. The art side of it, there, there's an artist in everybody, you know, and it's up to you to go out there and find it. And and I think that that's a part of me. I, I miss that. I look back at some of my early art of high school. I'm like, why don't I do that anymore? And it was because, you know, I was told I wasn't the greatest at it. And so what I do, I listened. When did I start listening to people? You know, I need to, right. I need to get back after it. So I, I, really I had a high to, school teacher. Yeah. I had a high school teacher tell me, Todd, that if I don't do better, uh, no, it was, I'm sorry, it was junior high. If I don't do better in English, that I would end up as a construction worker. <laughs> well, I ended up as a construction worker, so shame on her for not for trying to say that was a bad career because it right. it led to everything, you know. So, don't don't listen to to yeah, listen to the negative feedback, but don't believe it. Once yeah. you start, whatever you believe, you got to believe it before the world does. Mm -hmm. You know, if you believe you're a champ, you got to believe it before the world does. Mm -hmm. So do it first, man. Believe in yourself. Don't listen to that 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 adversarial voice in your head that tells you you can't. Whether you say you can or whether you say you can't, you're always right. That's what my mom taught me, and and she was right, man. One hundred percent on that. And you know, and a lot of times that that criticism, I think we we really need to not look at it as um, as so much criticism is. is sometimes it, it is smart things. You know, like I have often been criticized that my lighting wasn't the greatest here. You know, this microphone wasn't. The great. You know what? Okay. You know, instead of being you suck, why did you take the time out of your day to comment that? I'm like, hey, what? What can I do to, to make this better? You know, all right. So let me try these lights. And and so a lot of times I'll come across stuff and I'll post it in our group. Be like, hey, uh, you know, has anybody used these? What do you think of these? How does it work for you? Because I want to get better at it. And I don't know if, I, if I've sucked at something until somebody tells me, you know, you know, you have so many people in this. You're great. You're, here's your participation award. Here's everything that you deserve that sometimes you need that. Hey, you suck at this. So let's do what we can do to get you better. And, and I try. I try to, my best to keep getting better at it. Good for you, man. And and in truth, the person who's talking about your lighting on your podcast isn't listening to the message. They're missing the gold and they're they're tripping over pennies and missing gold nuggets. You know, they're right. they're trying to help you, they're trying to add value, but but in reality, your cell phone and lighting, it just it doesn't it, it there's not nearly as much weight. Like people ask all the time, what equipment do you use for YouTube? It's it totally doesn't matter. That's the answer. It doesn't matter. You have it in your pocket. Just use that. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at, you know, what we have in our pockets today compared to, you know, what, what is it? They, they said there's more computing power in our phone than what it took to put the 
first man on the moon. Like, yes. That's a big thing when you think about it. And yes, you know, you've got so much access to so many things, you know, uh, but what do we do with it, man? We, we watch cat videos, <laughs> you know, like, what do we do with it? You got everything on that thing. We do. You could, you, you could look up physics, man. You know, you could go to MIT and, and watch classes for free. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's, I, you know, uh, it's crazy. Uh, there's a Corsa. Corsa is the name of the website where there is a ton of, of universities that are offering online free classes. There's some paid ones there, but there's a lot of it. And, and one of the things, you know, I saw that Florida State had one on there and Florida State's my, my college football team that I that I love dear to my heart. And I'm like, you know what? I should take this course. So I get a certificate that says I'm a Florida State alumni. I'm like, I totally <laughs> yeah, and, and that's nice. nice. The, the knowledge is there. You know, when one of the things I remember in school was, you know, hey, it's not you need to know this math because it's not like you're going to be walking around with a computer in your or calculator in your pocket you're right now it's on my watch you know i got it here I, i've got that there you exactly an of knowledge that's in there you know it, and, you know some of our most successful people and the the most brilliant people that we that are on planet earth a lot of them dropped out of high school or college mm -hmm. a lot of them if not most of them so knowledge doesn't just come from the classroom it comes from your desire to learn and 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 it's never been easier to compartmentalize that and learn like you can have it at your fingertips start discovering it and then implement it i used to watch videos on youtube jogging on the treadmill i'd watch a video how to do something and i'd go right up to my office and i'd implement it and then i'd do it again i do because i could only remember one thing i go do one thing and i'd come back and do another yeah that's i that's... I, I, I didn't watch i didn't watch videos that got me nowhere and there's a lot of them on there mm -hmm. and that's the the thing in the key in there is it's taking action you know and i don't know how many times i, I can stress that it is you know taking action i can i can give you every tool that's out there to build a house but if you don't take the action at it you're just gonna sit there with the with a thing full of tools you know and, and, yeah and that's the the crazy thing is you can use those same tools whether you want to build a shed a house a, a car you can do so much with it but you know it's up to you to take the action to decide what you want to do with it and and i, I know i know it's tough and i know it's scary but uh you know you they really really have to take action one step further than that is to build a house you actually don't need that many tools you know what i yep. mean and so that's another thing is people get hung up on i gotta have all this stuff first like they want to go start working out so they go go buy workout clothes or they go buy it's like just just go for a jog just go walk you already got mm -hmm. shoes go do it don't like don't go buy a new camera because you want to take a photo just 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 do what with what you have make it pay for your next camera stop making excuses to do the work you don't get anywhere by getting good fishing tackle you get somewhere by fishing mm -hmm. that's full circle yeah. todd <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's taking that that whole you know what you have and, and just do those those little steps you know one of my goals for, for this year was you know i needed to be under 200 pounds i was creeping up on 300 and i'm like oh yeah i'm fat dad that's what i always played it as and but i knew i needed to stay healthy i knew i had to get with it and and so i i kind of took those little steps you know i quit buying soda for the house or pop or whatever well that's a whole different subject there but i i quit buying stuff like that i started watching what i was eating and so far i haven't worked out at all how long you've been at that it. how long you've been doing that todd how long you've been uh um trying to trying to get down to 200. so i just started that uh, january 1st uh, and i'm down 34 pounds and i haven't worked out i haven't done anything you know i i watched what i ate you know instead of i made things easier to get you know the, the chips for the kids were super easy to grab a bag for but you know what i just had to move the apples i just had to make little things like that i had to make it easier for me to break that cycle and once i did that you know i can see stuff come off and now i'm excited like hey if i can do if i've lost 30 some pounds just by changing what i ate what happens if i start adding a little exercise in there what yes you're doing that so you know it's those little steps nobody is asking you to change the world overnight all I'm asking you is, you know, pick up your trash today. You know, you do that, things are going to happen. You just those little small things, you know, is going to is going to change the way that, that everything works for you. So, have you have you ever seen the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead? I have not. Fat, that changed my life, dude. I, I'm back to those principles. I I was I was 330 pounds, and I got down to 217. Um, and I, I had a six pack and I was in good shape and I got away from some of those habits. I'm back to like 270 right now. 
but I'm in the same journey you are. I'm, I know how to get there. I've done it before. I know the action it takes. I'm back up before the sun. I'm doing it. But but that video taught me how to do it without like joining some diet plan. It it, it, it was life. And he calls it a reboot. When you go back, reboot, man. You know how to do it. Go do it again. And so, um, yeah, I'm in the same boat you are. So congratulations, man. Thanks, man. Good it, for you. It, it's one of those where I knew I needed to do it for myself. It, it, nothing would change that. And I knew trying diets or trying that I I'm trying to live by what somebody else is telling me, you need to eat this. You need to do that. And that's not going to work for me. I just need to watch what I'm eating. You know, I can still have, I can still have ice cream if I want it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we had brought in uh, uh, one of our daughter's friends. She was having a rough time in life and she, we let her move in with us and until she got things going well. And now she, we were able to get her to her grandparents couple states over so it really helped change her life but i had one daughter working at an ice cream place and another one working at dunkin donuts so tell me you know, when that fat loss journey that hey yeah guess what was coming home and i'm like nope i'm fine i i don't need that i i need to better myself for so i'm here for you guys and and that's the thing is you know like i said those, those little steps but so my, it's I, better I, it's I, better to be prepared for an opportunity and not get one than to get an opportunity and not be prepared I, so good for you and on that note, Mike, thank you so much for stopping by and coming in tonight. Uh, we feel blessed that we were able to do this. And, and man, I, I can't say how much I appreciate this and, and you coming in. It really means a lot to me. And, and at the end of the day, like I tell people, you know, you just have to ask, right? Be that asshole. Get out there. Ask those things because that's how we got Mike on here, right? It, it was amazing. So, so Mike, thanks for stopping in. Anything else you want to let anybody say before we get you out of here? Man, just uh, remember from Mike Quest, you got this. I'll see you Love on the that. next video. Love that. Man, you talk about an amazing show. What'd you guys think of that? What did you think of that? Like, I'm just, I, I, I'm ready. I, I, I'm ready to go celebrate tonight and have an amazing time. Uh, man, I, I don't know what more to do, uh, but I do know what we can do is we can talk more about this tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be in with Morning Mindset tomorrow night we have our Unlock Canva training. Oh, yeah. Never fall back.